All right, so what happens when two of the world's mi most menacing dictators meet? Well, we actually had a chance. We found out today. North Korea leader Kim Jong-un arriving in his armored train to meet with Putin of Russia, in Russia, right? So Kim declared that, uh, quote, uh, his full and unconditional support for Moscow's war in Ukraine. And this is raising fears in the West that uh, there could be more than just an arms deal in the works here. Joining me now, the Foreign Desk Editor-in-Chief, Lisa Daftari. You know, Lisa, I'm seeing all kinds of headlines. You know, it's hard to know, right? I mean, I go to your site every day for the real skinny, but there's a lot of stuff floating around out there. It's bad enough that they've met, that there's the solidifying this thing, and people wonder how far this relationship could go. Could it go beyond armament? Could it include even soldiers? Sure, and look what's happened with uh, Russia and Iran, for example. We thought it was going to be a few times of some trade, but whoever thought there would be so many trading partners and so many people willing to step up to help Russia in this war against Ukraine? Well... All these nations are sanctioned. What does that go to tell us? U.S. sanctions mean nothing. It used to be that you could sanction a country and the United States would see behavioral change from that country. Why? Because they'd want to start trading again. They'd want economic opportunity again. But now the rogue nations of the world are uniting. They're willing to put aside their differences and come together for the mere purpose, of course, economic benefit, right. but evading sanctions. When I hear that, though, it sounds like two things. A, that they don't think the U.S. has the economic might that it once had. B, they don't think we have the wherewithal, the willingness to use that might to enforce our, our strength. And a lot of folks say some of that emanated from the clumsy with, withdrawal from Afghanistan. Of course, all of this, it, it, they're watching, right? Of course they're watching. Our foreign policy is nothing. And a lot of people say it's because we don't have a foreign policy. We do, whether it's by design or by ignorance, our foreign policy is suffering. And who's gaining from all of this? Our enemies who are coming to each other. They're gaining strength. They have economic opportunity. And of course, none of these punitive measures from the United States mean anything. So we're not right. going to see any changes. Ironically, North Korea is a nation that's been under these kind of penalties for a long time. And it's not just Russia wooing them, right? So two days ago, uh, President Xi of China uh, said they ushered in a new era between them and North Korea. So you've got this, I mean, you've got a pretty interesting uh, threesome right there. Absolutely. And all these nations who are supposed to be isolated are no longer isolated. They're coming out and coming to each other as aides, willing to put anything aside in order to have these interest-aligned relationships and trade deals. China preparing for war. We keep hearing the drum beats of war getting louder and louder. And, you know, a lot of people are saying because China's economy is in such desperate straits that maybe an attack uh, or, or an effort to, to seize Taiwan gets moved up. Right. So it's the opposite of what the Biden administration is saying, that their economic woes are going to what's going to stop them from invading Taiwan. It's just the opposite. Look, these sound like very stark warnings that China's preparing for war. But it's it's a wake up call to the DOD and to the White House that China does have the might. And they have set their sights on becoming a supreme nation. And they've set their sights on competition directly with the United States. While we're looking at our military and learning about pronouns and emphasizing things like that, they have been emphasizing competition and military might. And that's why you're seeing them where they are right now. So what's your, your for you personally, as you do this every single day and you get you understand what's happening in the world far better than anyone else, you study this. What's your greatest concern right now? China and Iran's regime. Really? Really? Iran and Saudi Arabia seem to be making nice all of a sudden. Not necessarily nice, but they're really letting some of the, uh, some of the animosity go to the wayside. I think about that. I think about the BRICS, all these nations that want to join the BRICS. To your point, it feels like the, you know, there's a big group of folks on this planet that are cleaving away from the West. And I think it's the leadership of the U.S., but also the, the, the fecklessness of Europe. Absolutely. I mean, Europe, you, you just kind of look over Europe and you look over to the Middle East and you look at China as the threats that we're facing. And the United States, that's really doing nothing or playing catch up every Monday morning and saying having their press releases and, and, and really working around a lot of their mistakes. Like right. you mentioned, Afghanistan, you mentioned the deal that was brokered by China between Saudi Arabia right. and Iran. Huge. It was right under our noses. We didn't we didn't catch that at all. Right. But really... I got 20 seconds. Sure. Af Africa, there's a bunch of coups going on. It feels like all of these are former colonies of France. Again, is that another example of what we're talking about here? Absolutely. Every place where you're seeing uh, th this chaos, when you're seeing right. upheaval, it's because they know that they can do it. They know that this is the opportune time, and they know that the United States, they have at it. least, right, the Biden They're administration. They're seizing the moment, just like Liz Clayman <laughs> does every day at 3 o'clock. Right, Liz?